God is indeed good, right? All the time. And all the time, God is good. Amen. I want to meet with you all. Y'all tell me when. Probably not tonight, right? Maybe Sunday after church? Okay. Give me a few minutes. Okay. I don't need much time. Just a little bit. Yeah, you. <laughs> what makes you think we, without you? I don't know. If you don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Amen. Can somebody please get me a. Uh, is Pete back there? He's in the bathroom? Um, no, he has left the dawn outside. There he is. Deacon Ball. Yes, sir. Could you bring me a uh, paper towel, please, sir? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Conference call. Welcome. Again, we got a packed house in the building. Y'all look lovely. Don't let nobody tell y'all different. It's awesome. Ain't that right? Yes, that brother wearing navy and khaki like me. <laughs> there it is. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Amen. I don't know who told you to wear that today, but it's it working. Amen. Amen. So, um, thank you all for watching us on the live stream on tonight. Amen. We're having a grand time with the doctrine of salvation, right? Amen. Now, we all know, um, you know, the question is all the time, are you saved? How you know you saved? But then we go on, you know, talking about the ABCs, um, accept, believe, and confess, right? Who heard that before? Yeah. Yep, so y'all have heard that. Accept, believe, Confess the ABCs of salvation, right? But we come to find out it's a lot more than that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what have we learned so far about um, salvation in the Old Testament? You know, we still we still in there, but um, we've learned something that's a little bit different than what we. Well, let me put it to you this way: that's all surface stuff, right? Right, y'all. Right. That's that surface stuff. It's a lot more deeper than that. Amen. So um, as we are in the syllabus here, um, anybody watching, I say this every week, so I'm beating a dead horse. If y'all want a syllabus, all you got to do is call us. Um, Minister Audrey, you might want to help me. 352-554-6264. I finally learned our church phone number, 3214. You can call us, leave us a message on uh, the church line, unless I'm in the office. Um, we will make sure that you get a syllabus. Um, you can also message us on the Greater Faith Facebook page, or you can visit us on our website. Thank God for Elliot Adams, who keeps our website current. Well, as much as I give him, I need to give him some new stuff. You know, I need y'all's picture so we can put it on there, all right? Um, and um, you can get the syllabus from us, all right? So that you can follow along with what we're doing. We, we believe in passing out stuff that you can take home and read. Amen. So when we get through with all of this, the, the, the question will be after we have gone through the doctrine of God, which we did, and you can find this in the archives on or my library that's on Facebook, and it is public, so anybody can go back and watch any and all of them. Okay, we've talked about the doctrine of God, so now, greater faith, do we know who God is? Y'all scared to answer, <laughs> but it's complex. And you may be hesitant to answer because um, there's still so much we need to know about God, mm -hmm. right? But we know him more now than we did before. Am I correct with that? Mm -hmm. All right, so you got a bunch of amens then with that. Then we talked about the fall of man, right? 
Did you all know we were that jacked up? Hmm. Right? No, I am. Because really, just because we go to church, some of us think we holy. Okay. Right? We ain't got no issues. We all right. Right? Don't we think that? Or we did. Amen? And we start judging other people like we're better than they are. But really, all of us are guilty. All of us are sinners. Amen? So now we've seen how holy God is, how great he is. And we've seen the fall of man and how how messed up we are. And we all got issues. I don't care who you are. And because of the fallen state that we are in, we need the gift of grace. Which means God is going to overlook us and our sinful selves and extend to us amazing grace by his tender mercies and saves us. Thank you, Father. That's it in a nutshell. Am I right? Amen. So now you see the doctrines, how they line up one to another, and it gives us what we need. Man, God, we, 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 we so hard on other people that don't do what we want. We so hard on them. No mercy whatsoever. <laughs> right? And all of us got issues about us that God hates. Well, I ain't gonna say he hates anything, but Y'all understand. It could be a stench in his nostrils. Mm -hmm. But yet, he still loves us. Amen. Amen. Think about the worst thing you've ever done, and you may not even know what that is. Think about it. That thing that makes you want to hide under that table. Right? Yes, sir. I'm having flashbacks right now. Okay, Are y'all? Okay. But he still loves me. And still wants us with him forever. Why can't we do that for other people? That's why we come to church. Not to run around and shout and holler. And ain't nothing wrong with that. I ain't saying anything's wrong with that. But if that's all I'm doing and I'm not growing, I'm going to keep doing that same thing that is a stench in God's nostril. But just because I go to church, I think it's okay. Oh, he's going to forgive me. Yeah, but he, he, do, what is forgiveness? Maybe this should be a doctrine on forgiveness. What is that? If I'm going to keep doing it. Right? Amen. I'm like Paul. He said, am I saying this? Heaven forbid. <laughs> he said, no, you can't keep doing that. So God gets more grace. Y'all remember that in Romans? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not what he said. Amen. So we left off with Israel's response to God's deliverance was primarily praise as evidence so often in the Psalms. Now we talked about this a little more in, on, on, in Sunday school this Sunday. Amen. And, um, and, and, and I want to cover this real quick for somebody that's watching maybe that didn't catch this. If Israel's response to God's deliverance was primarily praise, what about when they were in the holding cell? of salvation. <laughs> Is that a good way of saying it? What about when you was going through your thing and God ain't delivered you yet? How did you respond then? Were you praising God? Um, Deacon S. Levon said last week, we're going to come in and worship and praise him anyway. I believe that you would. You know what I'm saying? But everybody won't. You know what I'm saying? I thought about what you said last week. 
And, um, and my brother back here said, we come in power. Yes, that's exactly what we do. But I see you week in and out, and you come in anyway. Don't nobody know you went through anything. Amen. But I know you did. Oh, yeah. I do too. I had to go home last night, and I'm not, I'm not making this about me. And I had to spend some meditation time with God because I, I learned something that I didn't understand. So I was like, I need to go home and have a talk with Daddy. And so I sat there, and um, spent some time with the Lord while watching swamp people. <laughs> but that was the little distraction I need. Y'all, y'all, y'all follow me. And sure enough, I got an answer. And I was like, okay, okay, because I'm gonna tell y'all the truth. I was sitting up there when I got home yesterday. And I was like, oh, this is going to be one of them sleepless nights. Y'all know how I slept last night? Ooh, I slept so good. That's because I knew I needed to hear from the Lord. So I didn't worry about it. I wasn't pouting about it. But I needed to hear from him because it was something I didn't understand. And I was like, okay. Um, and then he hit me with it. And I was like, oh, I didn't see that. Okay. And I was good. Went and had me two sugar-free cookies. <laughs> and some unsweet tea and lemonade. <laughs> sugar-free cookies minister. Yes, sir, I got it. Trying to behave, y'all. But it still goes back to Israel's response to God's deliverance was primarily praise. But what about that period when you were still in the mud. Are you praising God through that? I wasn't praising God yesterday when I got home from work. But at the same time, I wasn't worrying about it. I wasn't worrying about it. And I was like, okay, I need to hear from my father. Knowing full well that he may not answer. I didn't worry about that. I was like, and, and Satan tempts us because I was like, oh yeah, it's going to be one of them sleepless nights. He tempts us with that. He wanted me to believe I wasn't going to sleep last night. But I knew better. I was like, you know what? It is what it is. Well, I'm going to take, I'm, I'm take that. But I just need to have a little understanding. And he answered. He answered. Are y'all with me? What do we do in that period when God has not delivered us yet. Do we praise him anyway? Deacon S. Levon said, praise him anyway. That's what I do. I believe her. But everybody don't. There was a time when I didn't. Yes. Oh, yeah. So let's look at the children of Israel. Did all of them Complain while they were in the land of Egypt? Did all of them praise God? No. All of them didn't praise Him and all of them didn't complain. You got some did one thing, some did another thing. But the point is, you can tell who's doing what. Right? right. Come on, talk to me. I would like to say it's a process to build up that way. It is. I was so far yeah. away from that. Totally so far away. And even now, I have to grasp myself because I start sliding back that way. You know, I start banging on the table. <laughs> right. But then I have to bring myself back yeah. out of that and bring myself back to that and say, okay, I know what it is. Not yeah, you recognize the warfare that comes with this. Can I give y'all the one word? Maturity. Have you grown any from the last thing you went through? It's a question of maturity. That's why Elder Pete said, um, I wasn't always like that. That's because you've grown some. A lot. 
That's why you can come in and say, I'm going to praise God anyhow. Because everything you went through, you still woke up the next morning. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, I'm finna preach in a minute. But y'all understand what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Have you grown from your experience? Have you learned to depend on the Lord? Praise God, somebody. That's what I'm talking about. That's why we come to church. One, to worship God, and two, to grow. That's it. Maybe another one, to serve, but you ain't gonna serve if you ain't growing. You won't complain a lot. Why I got to do that? <laughs> Amen. 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 That's what we do. Yes, sir. So, it's all about that. I watch Brother Willie come in here every week, every twice week. a week. And I watch him come in here early. Yeah, early. <laughs> he be here before I get here. Y'all can't tell me he ain't growing. Oh, Holy Ghost, don't, don't start too early. <laughs> Y'all with me here. So, 430 years, they were in bondage. They weren't praising God. So that's the point. What do you do before God swoops in and saves you? And so now what they went through was examples of salvation. May I say it that way? And here they go. Israel's response to God's deliverance was primarily praise. Because when God does something, you're going to praise him. But if God didn't, and you come in church with an expectation that he's going to fix you, and prophet so-and-so come over and tell you, you're going to be healed. Who said that? Y'all understand what I'm saying? Everybody want to be a prophet. Now, I said this last week, but I'm like, not everybody want to be an apostle. They leave us poor bishops behind. I didn't ask to be bishop, y'all. I, I had nothing to do with that. Nothing. I didn't wake up one day and say, Pastor ain't enough, I want to be a bishop. No, somebody had to call me and tell me, and I still was like, uh-uh. <laughs> I'm just telling y'all the truth. But now the thing is to be, everybody want to be an apostle. Don't get mad at me, y'all. Don't get mad at me. I'm just telling it like it is. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, what is this about we got to be titled? Bishop was a big thing. Now, Bishop ain't enough. I seen one guy was Bishop two weeks ago. Now he apostle. I'm like, when that happened? Okay. I'm just saying, y'all. Um, like, I work in like cleaners and stuff, and I seen like a road. The, the dress robe, prophet, apostle, prophet, apostle, such and such. Which one you want? You're going to be all of them. Oh, Lord. Like, what kind of I mean, we, you know, I mean, we can make up anything, y'all. I'm sorry. Don't y'all get mad at me. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, they ain't had that many back when they had them. Right. That's right. That's right. You're at 12. Now you got. 12 million. Don't get mad at me, y'all. If, 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 if you an apostle, I don't know if you saw the Lord or not. I ain't got nothing to do with that. Just don't come over here telling me, oh, man, you're an apostle. No, I ain't. I didn't ask to be bishop. I was totally fine being pastor. Yes, sir. You asked the question, what is it? I, I believe it's um, self-obsession self and ego. Oh, yeah, and, and really the question was rhetorical, you know what I'm saying? But you're right. It's all of that plus some other stuff, or somebody came up and told you that, and you ran with it. Can't nobody come in here and tell me, oh, you are the, you, you an apostle, or come some prophet come in and say, next year you're you going to be, I don't even know what they are now. Do they get consecrated? Do they get appointed? I don't know. But if somebody come running up in here telling me that, I'm going to tell them, man, you need to find the right James Dixon because it ain't me. <laughs> Because I'm quite sure God would tell me. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. And I ain't 
fit to make myself one. The point I'm making is, and I'm trying to move on, but I'm trying to help us understand that, that, that we come in church, not delivered yet, and we come in here expecting somebody to encourage us, to make us feel better. And we've become addicted to church. And we come in here not with the expectation to worship God, but with the expectation that I'm going I'm I'm to get a feel good out of this. The expectation is to get a feel good, but no healing. Because come Monday morning, that same issue still there. And we come and get hands laid on us and we fall all out. Don't get mad at me. I'm just saying. And I know better, so don't tell me I don't, because I do. If you don't agree, that's your you got that right to do so. Amen. Amen. And we, we come all out and all it takes is somebody to tell us what we want to hear and touch us in the head and we die. I don't tell y'all what I said in the Sunday school because we wasn't recording it live. So I ain't going to say it. I'll tell y'all afterwards. Y'all tell me the truth then. Am I saying that the Holy Ghost don't hit some of us if we fall out? Oh, yeah, he will. So don't sit up here and say, you know, that I said, because I didn't say that. He does. He does. Amen. Amen. And I'm not saying that you came in there and didn't get that. You probably did. But everybody did. Everybody, everybody, everybody did. Just like everybody ain't no prophet. Amen. <laughs> Amen. God tells me stuff sometimes that don't make me a prophet. I'm going to move on. Why did the prophets in the Bible always warn people? But the prophets, did they tell you you're going to get a car, a house, or a ticket? <laughs> <laughs> they don't go to prophets. Y'all understand? Now listen, I don't know about y'all, but that's all I hear. God is going to give you a, give you that business. Y'all might be all right when I say it, but somebody might not like it, but I'm sorry. Y'all in the house with me? Do I believe in the Holy Spirit and the, 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 the unctions of it? Yeah! You want to know what else I believe? I believe in exorcism. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Lord exercised one right in front of me. Right, okay. I didn't know what I was doing because I didn't do nothing. But praying, it was talking about love. And I saw him come out. I, I'm... I, so don't tell me I don't know about the, the unctions and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I do. Yeah. I saw him heal my mother. Mm -hmm. When they told us she wasn't getting out of the hospital. And she wanted to be home for Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving morning, my mama went to the house. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me. <laughs> See, you said something there when they do that to prophets. Yes, you're going to be blessed with automobile, automobile, da 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 but you don't know what I'm trying to come out with. There's some things I'm dealing with, so I know that's not going to happen. <laughs> He's working on me, this bull corn right come on, here. You know Why would God give you a car when you got suspended license? Come on, brother. Somebody help me here. I can do anything. Yeah, but not everybody. If you got a 340 credit score and I ain't doing nothing to fix it, so he's going to bless you. And God going to give it to you when you ain't doing nothing else he told you to do. 
Can God do it? Yes. But he ain't going to do it through you because you ain't doing nothing. That's the point. I walked on the, I'm trying to move. I walked on the car dealership, not sure I can get one. And walked out of there with a new one. Okay. After I went to one dealership and they tried to uh, give me a car that was, um, had 83,000 miles on it and was a 2016. And the whole time I was sitting there, I was like, uh, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. And they call themselves lowering the price, but yeah. the monthly payment was still, mm -hmm. I said, okay. something ain't right okay. here. And I was like, and the whole time I was like, you know what, I, I'm not comfortable here, I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. right. And I had a pre-authorization, mm -hmm. is what I had. Mm -hmm. I walked in there with pre-authorization, yeah. they, they wanted to run me through everybody, I was like, I didn't want you to do that. I already got yeah. who I wanted to finance it. Yeah. But they yeah. ran me through it anyway. Now I got the finance it, mm -hmm. but I, it wasn't what I wanted. And I'm like, these people, I already had that. So I left. Went home, mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got mad. Y'all ain't, like, what's wrong with that? That's biblical too. Okay. Went back a couple of days later, went to another dealership. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give him a plug. Southeast Cars. I went okay, there. Okay, man, that's right. Wasn't there an hour. I was there long, longer for them to you. wash it and clean it up. That what that was to get the car. And they do not bother you. They had eight hundred miles on it. Mm. <laughs> New, still under warranty, and it's still under warranty right now. All right. Now. So all I'm saying, don't tell me I don't know. But if I'd have bought that other one and I was oh, sitting there yeah. uncomfortable like that, and that's not a God. Yeah, yeah, I, like, uh, I went into the other place confident I was going to leave. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. now. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. And kept my dad. All right. <laughs> I'm I, I can move now, right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. But I'm just trying to show us that our response is not always going to be praise. It will be after God does. But the point I'm trying to make now is what about that in-between period? What do we do then? I want to be like Deacon Nancy Levon and praise him anyway. Praise him anyway. Or we worship God for who he is. I know God can get me out of this. Okay, That's worship. Okay. Then when he does it, I'm going to praise him. That's when I'm going to come into church skipping and dancing. And okay. Get in my way if you want. This morning, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Because if I'm alive, I need to keep doing something. Is all I'm saying. I need to keep doing something. And stay away from the negative damn seed. Stay away from them. Anytime somebody come up to you with, if I were you, <laughs> I see right now, I'm fitting to go. But yesterday when you were here, you doing the same are y'all in the house with me? Amen. Amen. So let's let's go down. How far did we we we, we did the prophets emphasize the eschatological aspect yes. last week, yes. didn't we? Yes. Okay. And we went over Zechariah chapter nine verse nine, which was good, and then came right back. And that's what Jesus was talking about in Matthew twenty one. Right. Yes. So here we go. Israel understood salvation to be God's work. So even though we went through the whole discussion about salvation in the Old Testament, here we come to wrap it up. Israel understood salvation to be God's work. Do we understand that? Do we? You do now? He said it. Now I do. Yeah. Because if I'm coming to church because a certain person is there with a title and I'm looking for them to tell me something.
then they understand salvation to be the work of that person and not of God. I don't want y'all coming in here looking for me to be that what you need. Now, I should be working through the power of the Holy Spirit to give you what you need, but I cannot save you. I don't want you to think I can save you. Only God can save you from whatever it is you need to be delivered from. Y'all understand? My job is to help you understand like Israel understood that salvation is the is God's work. Somebody can say amen, amen right now if you want. Amen. Here's what they saw. They saw his deliverance, okay. cried unto the Lord for help, mm. and when they cried to the Lord for help, they trusted him yeah. with it or trusted him for it. That's faith. Praise amen. Yes, sir. Amen. And praised him in response when he did. Hallelujah. Again, what did they do in the midst of it? He ain't done it yet. So you ain't praising him right now. Then if you're not praising him in the midst of it, what are you doing? Say what now? They're praying and trusting in him. Which is what? Faith. Which is faith. But what is that of God? What do you do with that? While you're praying, while you're trusting him with your faith, what are you doing? When you're praying, you're worshiping. Your belief is your faith. Your belief in what? Your belief is in God because of who he is. And I, I'm, I'm going through it right now, but I'm going to worship God in a house. And I can take that to another level with myself. Okay, I see what you're saying. What I was doing... I kind of backed out of it. I'm angry, disappointed, and I broke out of it. But then after a couple of days, you know what? I need to regroup. Okay, I know what this is. I need to regroup. I need to get patient. And now I'm getting back to the praise and worship. But I commit. I fell out of that yeah. at least for a little bit of time. But I realized, okay, that ain't going to work. But you ain't going to try to do it on your own. <laughs> so I come back now. Um, excuse me. I pray you. I worship you. I know I, I cut you off for a while. Mm -hmm. I can do this on my own. I realize, bro, this ain't but you know, it's hard to come back. But I can admit, I, I bailed to the side. Not too long, but for a little while. But I realized I had to come back. What is that when that happens? Somebody, because I'm, I'm really trying to help us. What is that? When you can't worship God, what is it? Warfare. Warfare. Mm -hmm. Deaconess Levon getting a bubble gum for the mm -hmm. night all mm -hmm. over the place. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. It's a distraction. Mm -hmm. By who? And how does he do it? Subtly. He does it subtly. When you're strong, yeah. when you're strong, he comes slick. Mm -hmm. But when you're weak and you at that point, boy, he, he bams you there. Oh, I got you now. Mm -hmm. But he keep hitting you with them little soft stuff. Because mm -hmm. you know your weakness. You, you understand? It's, it's like I was watching a documentary on um, one of the boxers. It wasn't Mike Tyson called Mike just go to knock you out. <laughs> it was one of them that kept working the body. 
And he talked about that. He kept working the body. Because when you work the body, your dukes are up here to protect your face. Mm -hmm. When the whole time you're trying to hit you in the head to knock you out. Now every now and then you can get hit that hit hit that right. that, that kidney right. or liver punch and knock you out. But most of the time you're trying to get that head. So your right. dukes up. Right. right? So do you keep while you up here, this open. Oh, that's so open. Yeah. work that work that body. After a while, your hands start coming down. And after a while, they come down some more. And that's what Satan you do. He keep working that body to get you to drop your guard and then slam you. Y'all understand? It's the same concept. Amen. And he come... And, 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 and I'm really trying to help somebody here. We're talking about delivering. I, you know, I can tell now I probably ain't going to get bad. This is not next week in the New Testament. But I'm telling y'all, and here's where we mess up. Because we blame Satan for everything. Everything. Yes, we do. When the bottom line is, he's only giving you what, what you, you want. want. Yes, yes, yes. So, don't blame Satan for that. You let him know that's what you like. And he will give it to you until you get healed from whatever it is that's got you. You got to be delivered. Does it make sense? Oh, yeah. He knows Can what you like. Can I use an example, Bishop? Please use an example. Uh, I, okay, y'all know how I like chips and chip, all mm. the stuff I shouldn't like, right? I do too. But lately, almost every bag of potato chips I bought recently has been stale. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, and I think God is weaning me off of oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny, it's like the cigarette. <laughs> I hope y'all heard it, but she said, you know, God is trying to tell me something. Every bag of potato chips I get was stale. Yep. But we want to blame everything but somebody else. Amen. I was talking with the brothers. You dipped on if you went to the store. We was waiting for you to come back, Donnie. But um, we was having a conversation about how your flesh, which is your body, reacts when it knows it's going to get something. Mm -hmm. okay. Right? Yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your body reacts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> some people got to go to the bathroom <laughs> or some people go through the motions of going to the bathroom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to get it down. <laughs> and your body be like, Oh, yeah, it's going to be on now. As soon as I get back to the office, get my check. It's over. I ain't trying to stir up that to nobody, but y'all know how it works. What about that other person? You know you finna see them. <laughs> I don't know how your body reacts, but it's going to do something. Gonna do something. I ain't saying that, Holy Ghost. I ain't saying it. <laughs> I got it, but I ain't saying it. I'm just, y'all understand. I understand. The flesh wants what it wants. Your flesh likes sin because it satisfies it. It makes it feel good. Mm -hmm. So your body reacts when it wants it. Excuse me. <laughs> but you ate them anyway. Ate them anyway. <laughs> Amen. I like what you said yeah. because people want to point to drugs and alcohol, alcohol yeah. or a person when mm -hmm. sin is sin. Mm -hmm. 
And it comes in the form of potato chips and chocolate chip cookies, just like it does crack cocaine. Right. I was listening to Steve Harvey and um, this guy could not enjoy relations with his wife and he wouldn't tell her why. And come to find out that he had diabetes mm -hmm. and the medication yeah, was affecting was his ability yeah. to do what she and he wanted to do. Yeah. But he didn't tell her and the reason she said was because he know I'll make him stop eating that those sweet potato pies and mm -hmm. that fried chicken and all of that. So he wouldn't tell her because he wanted <laughs> to keep <laughs> eating. <laughs> Y'all understand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's do, does does that brother need to be delivered? Oh, yeah. Now y'all got salvation. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's what salvation, I'm trying to explain it by using application. Mm -hmm. um, y'all with me here. So if you got something you need to take care of, That's right. you need to be delivered from it. And I can't go in a church service expecting somebody to, to, to make me feel good. You treated it like an addiction. Amen. Amen. And just cause prophet so-and-so come every Friday night, I'm going to run over there. And when I leave, somebody at my house waiting on me. You ain't delivered from it because they still there. And prophet so-and-so didn't get them out. Prophet so-and-so can't get them out if you keep letting them in. That's the point. Are y'all with me? You can't get off crack if you keep going to the crack house. Y'all never seen somebody get out of church and go to the club? Yeah. Straight power swing. Y'all understand? Y'all understand? Fletchers didn't get packed till 1230. Yes, sir. Wait no watch night service to be over. You eat that little, that little sausage and scrambled eggs. Wait this is service. I'm just trying to be real, y'all. You know. But what I'm saying is, we are we talking about salvation? So this is the example from the Old Testament. So again, Israel understood salvation to be God's work. They saw his deliverance, cried unto the Lord for help, trusted him for it, and praised him in response. So in the midst of that, so I went the long way of using some real life examples that maybe somebody needed to hear it. So what do you do before God delivers you? You worship him. Anyway, why? Because of who he is. And I know he's going to get me out of this. I know he's going to deliver me from it. But I need to be a little obedient and do what he says. Or else God will let you choose. Can I get an amen? amen. <laughs> Do y'all understand? So you got a role in this. The problem today is we expect God to get us out of something we put ourselves in and, and keep ourselves in. And we want God to just remove it. So we come to church expecting God get us out of something we put ourselves in. And you still holding on to what got you there. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I don't know if I shared the good news. Mm -hmm. A couple of weeks ago, um, my diabetes. Um, he said his diabetes. I no longer have to take medication. Hey, he no hey, longer has hey, to hey, take hey, medication. Hey, 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 hey. But. 
when I found out I had diabetes, I knew that God wasn't going to deliver me from it if you kept off. But I had to follow some instructions. Hey, come ah! on, man. There you go. There you go. Well, now. This is, but this is the thing. This is how I'm being attacked now. Is uh, now that I know I don't have to take the medication anymore, my blood sugar is, is, is normal, been normal for a couple of weeks without the medication. You know, I kind of like want some of this. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. You're all right. Ate a piece of fried chicken the other night. I ain't had fried chicken in seven months. <laughs> I ain't had nothing fried in seven months. Um, I see myself like um, flipping. Yeah. Back into the old habit. Ah. Now let me let me let me tell y'all let me tell y'all what this brother just just said. I don't know if you all heard, but he said that he was delivered from diabetes. So now he takes no medication. That's a blessing. And and the, the things that he was doing, now God healed you. Mm -hmm. But he asked you to do some things. Mm -hmm. I lost right? 30, I lost 30 pounds. He he okay? Lost 30 pounds. Mm -hmm. The Lord asked you to do something. You did it. Which means what is the definition of repentance? Repentance is turn away from sin and turn to God. Problem is, now you want that cookie. No, I don't want one. He said, I don't want one, I want the whole bag. So that's what, so y'all y'all hear me, thank you. Here's what we run into. The enemy always tempts us. Even when we deliver, he still, go ahead and eat that cookie. You eat one cookie. Man, wasn't it good? Yeah, it was good. Get you two more. You get two more. It, you, you feel yourself slipping back, but that's what Satan does. So, when it comes to repentance, you always gotta do it. You always have to work on it. Always. Are y'all with me here? Mm -hmm. You always got to work on it. Because you always got a tempter tempting you to do what got you from where you were. We want you back. I want some real sugar in my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm doing it sweet, you know. <laughs> I do it so much now. If I get regular sugar, it's, it's too sweet. I can't handle it. Amen. I don't even buy it. See, here's the thing. You won't find no sugar in my house. Ain't none in there. You can come there and walk me if you want. Deacon Moore came to my house and I, I said, yeah, he had a cup of coffee with me. And I ain't had nothing but Splendor. So he had to use that. Good, yeah, I but you ain't get no sugar in my place. See, but that's what I say. You got to work at it. Amen. So y'all listen. The song of salvation in Isaiah 12, verse 2, taken from the Exodus experience in Exodus 15, verse 2, and echoed in the Psalms, Psalm 118, verse 14, is a beautiful example of that expression. The Lord, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. And that's from the NIV. So can I say it again? Y'all go back and read these. The song of salvation. In Isaiah 12, verse 2. Taken from the Exodus experience, Exodus 15, verse 2, and echoed in the Psalms in Psalm 118, 14, is a beautiful example of that expression. Let's look real quick. I got, I got five minutes. Let's go first, even though it's in Isaiah, but it said it was taken from the Exodus experience, so let's go to Exodus first. Exodus 12. 
Exodus 12. I know it's Bible study. This is the first time we're going into the Bible. 15. Sorry, Exodus 15. I'm looking at Isaiah 12. Exodus 15, verse 2. All right. Woo, Jesus. Ha, ha, ha. Amen. Right y'all good? Amen. I had a, while y'all looking, I had a conversation with my son, Lorenzo. I happened to show up when he got off of work. I bet he was praising God right then. Good to show up. And he was he was saying how he's not who he used to be. And I said, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's a praise, right? right. And he said, But I still feel like I'm learning. I said, You will always be that. You ain't gonna never get to what where you know everything, but it's good to see you still learning, but have learned. Yeah, I am Amen. I'm the pastor here. Learning every day. I told y'all I went home last night, thought I wasn't going to sleep. But I still was worshiping God, but I would get tempted too. That don't mean I'm going to just sit there and cry. Y'all, why y'all still looking? I got to tell one of my favorite little stories. I like gun smoke, y'all. Y'all know I like gun smoke. Man had a gun on Matt Dillon. And he was saying, how that feel I had his gun on you? He's like, there ain't nothing you can do about it. Matt said, what do you want me to do? Cry? <laughs> I was like, that's my bed right there. <laughs> Say, what you want me to do? Cry? Because I ain't crying. No, God is bigger than that at you. That was bad, but I was like, that's a bad joke. All right. <laughs> Exodus 15, verse 2. Y'all ready? Amen. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me the victory. This is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. All right, let's go to Isaiah 12 now. Isaiah 12, this is after the psalm, beginning of the major prophet. Isaiah 12, first book of the prophet. Amen, Isaiah 12, verse 2, right? Yes. Yeah. There it is again, somebody said. Y'all got it? Yeah. See, God has come to save me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. Here's the song. The Lord God is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. Same thing. He echoed it, right? Taken from the Exodus experience. It's going to be echoed in the song. Psalm 118. Go backwards. Psalm 118. I get Psalm 115, so I'm close. Psalm 118, verse 14. Mm. <laughs> now, now listen, the next Bible study we're going to have is how to study the Bible. Would you hear what we did that one? Yeah. Okay, it always come out different. It come out a bit different. There's some stuff going to come out that didn't come out last night. But we still need, but we got, we got one, two, three, New people. Amen? Amen. So, it's going to be scores of others now that's going to watch it. And the last time I told it, I was like, we need to record it. All right, y'all ready? ready? Psalm 118, verse 14. Y'all ready? Amen. Can we say it together, everybody? I got the New Living Translation. Okay, ready, set, read. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my strength and, and my song. song. He, he has given, given me victory. victory. Talking about deliverance. You, Talking about salvation. So we got to get this right. The ultimate salvation will come at the end time. But he saves us all the time in between. Yeah, he does. Doesn't he? Yes, he does. Doesn't he, y'all? Yes, he does. Oh, we're thankful. Yes, we're thankful. Y'all give the Lord a hand clap of praise right there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Boy, good cold water. Ain't that like it? Ooh. Amen. Any questions, comments, concerns? Thank y'all for watching. We, 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 we didn't cover much, but we covered a whole lot. 
let me explain something. We use a lot of application in this church because we want you to get it. So, um, Bible study, Bible reading can be an issue for us because we don't unpack it. Amen? Amen. Satan could take the Bible and make it ineffective in your life. So quit going around remembering all these verses. I went to the gas station. I'm pumping gas, and the guy was pumping gas in his car. He slung so many verses so fast, I couldn't catch him. I'm like, I'm like who's going to hurry up, car? So I can get up out of here. This holy joke about this wear me out. I mean, he was slaying the boy. Oh, this gas so high. I said, yeah, it is. Oh, but he started slanging verses. I'm like, anybody tell you to buy that SUV? I filled up. My car was $46. <laughs> you got to. <laughs> anybody tell you about that? Y'all understand? We're going to. Y'all hang around. Let us get the benediction and leave here under the ark of faith. Amen. 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 So we're going to have the diaconate ministry or the Judah ministerial staff. Somebody come up, give us a closing prayer and benediction. Amen. Amen. See y'all next week, next Tuesday. We're going to go to the New Testament of the doctrine of salvation. Amen. I'm going to try to wrap it up in a couple of weeks so that when September comes. Yep, I believe we can do it. When September comes, I don't know if I'm going to be teaching Bible study for a month or not. It depends on if somebody can teach it. I ain't going to make y'all do it. But if somebody wants to, yes, ma'am. We go to the nursing home Sunday. We go to the nursing home on Sunday. Amen, everybody. So we will come. We will come here for Sunday school. We will collect our tithes and offerings because we still got bills to pay. And then take off and go to Magnolia Ridge. Amen. So if y'all watching us, we'll we'll live stream from Magnolia Ridge as well. We're going to the assisted living facility. I ain't gonna call it a nursing home. Beautiful place. Rehab facility. Rehab facility. Rehab facility. All right. They they would close the ice cream bottle in there. See, that's another that's another protection of God. Won't have the ice cream bottle. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. God bless you. Love you. Nothing you can do about it. Oh, the prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Father God, we thank you right now for this awesome Bible study, Father God. And Father God, as we leave this place for worship, we just pray right now, Father God, for your traveling grace. So each and every one of us can get home safe. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 For the benediction. May the words of my mouth, the of my mouth, mouth the meditation of my heart, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable. Be acceptable within thy sight. Be acceptable within thy sight. O oh Lord, oh Lord, my strength, my strength, my strength and my redeemer. And my redeemer. In, Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good night, everybody. Good night, online peoples. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night.